$3.4 million loss trading crypto in one week. And don't. Don't revenge trade and don't smoke weed while you're trading. <laughs> How did that make you feel losing that money? That's nah, normal, bro. Part of the process. So you weren't emotional at all about losing that amount of cash? Nah. Uh, what kind of, what at that stage, what percentage of your net worth was that? Probably like, million? like 7%, 8%. It's substantial, but it's like, it doesn't really make a difference because I've also had really good trades and I went into the trade knowing that I could lose sizably, but I wasn't expecting that. I woke up, it was funny. I was in Mexico and fuck bro, so bad. So I'm like smoking a joint with one of my boys. I'm like, hey, this the market's gonna pump. This was when Bitcoin took the first crash, like the first crash from 60 all the way to like four. It was like disgusting, bro. Was, I got fucking wrecked. It spikes down. I go to bed, right? Like I'm, I'm in bed. I wake up in the morning, I go to my exchange. And I'm like refreshing, right? I'm looking, I, I have like a $3.67 million balance in there. I'm refreshing. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why is this not loading? Why is it not loading? So I contact support. I'm like, hey guys, like my, my screen's not loading. What's going on? And they're like, what do you mean it's not loading? And they're like, yeah, I can't see my balance. Like, no, you got liquidated. So when I went to the, when I went to check out my shit, it's not that my balance was not showing, it's that my balance was gone overnight, my entire thing got liquidated. I didn't set up my stop losses properly. I was smoking a joint, doing my own thing. I got fucked. Now, what was the lesson? One, revenge traded because I was trying to ride a wave that I wasn't supposed to ride. I had a prior loss, small loss right before. It was completely okay because I came from a $5.2 million win, $5.6 million win. And then from a $7.2 million ICO slash IDO token like release that I got. And that was fucking nice. So I was kind of, coping with that. What it taught me was don't revenge trade and understand that you're playing with real fucking money, bro. But simultaneously, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to bet heavy again. And I'm going to continue developing the skills because when you see dudes that are out here talking about $100 million investments, billion dollar investments, these are real people making real decisions of that level. And you need to have sizable balls and cojones, you know, to go for it. If you want big money, you got to be willing to risk it. A lot of people would have probably just hung up their hat and been like, right, that's I hung it. it up. I hung it Me up for a while, bro. I hung it up for a while. It fucked my head So it what makes you up. different? Like, why did you not hang it, hang it up forever? I like crypto, bro. It's, it's, I fucking love it, dude. I love it. I love crypto. I love innovation. I love, I love the ability to have free markets. I like the ability to be able to invest into small projects, into uh, new technology. I like the concept of just being a degenerate online sometimes, bro, with these fucking, with, with this internet shit. I was a, de a degenerate with fucking Shopify, dude. Like, if you wanna go all in, you have to be a savage. You have to be a savage in anything that you pioneer in life. If you wanna trade the markets, get good at trading the markets. Dude, I'm, buddy, I'm buddies with some of these crypto nerds. Dude, these guys, put order lots of $30 million, $40 million. You see their PL swing three, $4 million in a day. It's disgusting. What type of person you have to become to develop that level of strength to trade? Now, am I gonna wanna do that? I don't know. I went through it. It's pretty psychotic. It's pretty chaotic. There's a reason I'm in my mid twenties and I already have white hair. It's because I went through a period of like massive stress in the markets, but it went extremely well. I think people need to take sizable bets less bets and more informed bets. And that's a good starting point. So that was your biggest loss. How about your biggest win? $7.2 million uh, investment token allocation. I think I cash in like 5.6 out of it in one day. And what token was that? You can't say. You can't say. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that is, is pretty just crazy fucking mental though. though. 5.6 M in I mean, one bro, day. Look at, uh, I mean, even Capital Club, Capital Club, did over three million dollars in the first eight hours net profit and how did that feel when the money hit your bank account it's not mine it belongs to the club i mean i i I've, guys i don't see money like mine anymore i there it's the business's money when when it's when my investment firm makes money i, I don't make money the firm makes money I, it's, it's when the private equity uh firm goes out and buys a piece of a company and then sells it 
the fund and the private equity firm makes money, not Luke Belmar it lands in Luke Belmar's bank account. Luke Belmar is an employee of his companies. Luke Belmar gets salaried and Luke Belmar gets dividends quarterly and annually regarding his performance. That's it. And I operate it in that way. My companies have value. You know, the, the, uh, the network that I have is what holds the value. So money's dope. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. But what I think I'm most proud of is developing great relationships in the business space, great relationships in the entrepreneurial space with people like you guys, people like your dad, and enjoying this journey together. I think if we can stop talking so much about P&Ls and really just focus on the journey and the development of self and how we can help each other and where we fuck up and where we're not so perfect and introducing authenticity as now the new standard for what it means to be a good entrepreneur. I don't care if you make $80,000 a year. If you're a person of character, if you're a person of virtue, if you're a person of truth and authenticity, I will re I respect you. If you're a person that makes tens of millions of dollars, but you're a piece of shit, brother, what does that mean? It means nothing. We were talking about who, who, who was the billionaire that died recently? Charlie Munger, hero, entrepreneurial hero, investing hero, billions of dollars. He's dead. Done. None of the money matters. His portfolio allocation doesn't matter. How much of Berk Berkshire Hathaway he owns, doesn't matter. None of it matters. The people that he impacted, the relationships that he had, the truth that he imparted, the virtue or non-virtue in which he lived is what determined whether he was su successful or not. And hopefully on his deathbed, he determined, you know what? I lived a successful life. But he has an interesting quote. He says, to live in a state of dread or to live in a state of fear or to live in a state of anxiety is a terrible way to live. And that was him at 29 when he'd just gone through a divorce and a child that had died and then became a multi-billionaire. So you go from the valleys of death to the pinnacles of heaven and none of it still matters. It's how you treated everybody along the journey, how you treated yourself, how you were in that endeavor. And I think that that is the cumulative definition of what I would say is successful. And I think we can all live it. Do you think generational wealth plays a part in success? Because I agree with you, all of those things are very important. Um, but, you know, what is obviously wealth? people want to you know, become rich to pass what it is on wealth? to their kids. What is wealth? Well, health, uh, relationships, money, it's all of those things together. But only the money gets passed on is what you're referring yeah. to. So, oh, only so the wealth, money. wealth is a mindset. Wealth, I can give a person a lot of money and them not be wealthy. So wealth is a mindset. So yes, you can instill generational wealth. So you can pass on your knowledge and all of that stuff as Because well. that is all that you can pass on. Dude, if you give somebody money and they don't know how to wield it, mm. you've destroyed them. Mm. 